Hello everybody, let's focus on this simple example and in our playlist of linear system theory example problems, right? And this is a type of linear, kind of linear algebra and kind of linear system theory typical problem, right? Here, the given set U, script U, right? And it consists of the continuous real functions defined on here and sometimes there, right? Like zero one, right? Okay. Indicate the continuousness of the functions in that set, and this notation kind of signifies vector space, and then underlying field. And here, the underlying field is real numbers, right? By the way, a quick information: the field. For example, R is a field, right? Example, well, R, real numbers, and complex numbers, and I'm sorry, this one is also a field, right? What is this? This is the rational functions whose coefficients, which is parameterized by S, right? Indeterminate is S, whose coefficients are real numbers meaning let's say for example 2 times s square plus 5 times s3 over 3 times s4 right plus 7 times s right this is a this is this is basically in in this space right and those are the three examples of a field, right? Of course, there are, there must be other ones, but these are the general examples that people talk about. And all right, let's focus on the problem now. Show that, show that this expression is a linear vector space. Take the dimension of the given vector space right okay and this is part a this is part a let's just focus on the part a right here and of course people usually write eight properties right eight properties of a um, vector space right these are the vector space properties and we need to check each one of those properties conclude whether or given given I don't know I mean geometric objects maybe or mathematical object is a vector space or not right so um, I use MIT lecture notes to come up with that 11 property and that's exhaustive right People skip a bunch of them, and yeah, I didn't make any assumptions. And these are the properties, right? These are the properties. Let me. I hope you can see that, right? All right. I'm now looking at this here. The first property: close under vector addition, right? If we sum, and this is the vector sum, right? If we sum two vectors in that vector space, we would get something that is again in the vector space, right? All right, this is the property one. And close under scalar multiplication, we take some vector in that vector space and we scale it, right? Using some real numbers or a field, right? Field is a more general term, of course, right? But first, it would be better for us to just only focus on real numbers. Right, for the sake of um, simplicity, I guess. And this expression must be in that given vector space, right? Okay. This is the second property. I'm going each one of them one by one, right? And identity element of vector addition, right? Meaning vector addition, there must be some zero vector, right? Okay. There must be some zero vector. 
kind of signifies that. And fourth property, commutativity of vector addition, right? U and V vectors, if we sum them, and U, V commutes, right? It basically means that commutativity of vector addition, right? For example, A matrix times B matrix is not equal to B times A, right? This, this is not commutative, right? But for example, A plus B, even though they are matrix, right? And is B plus A. This is commutative, right? Okay. And let's focus on the fifth property. Associativity of vector addition, right? And here, it is not important where we start. Associativity is kind of signifies that a plus b plus c you have that you can you can just compute this b plus c and let's call it d right e and then you can sum them up right then you can do that or or you can also do that in that order a plus b and let's call it F, right? And then you can sum those vectors up, right? And you will get the same thing. It is not important in which order you make that computations. Associativity, associativity basically signifies that, right? And the sixth property, inverse elements of vector addition, meaning, meaning for every... By the way, I should... Be, this is not for every vector that is not zero vector by the way in that vector space there must be an inverse element corresponds to that corresponds to that given vector right and we signified that label that by minus u here right minus u is the inverse element of vector addition right and zero doesn't have or maybe they have it have as all right let's continue this is seventh property distributive distributivity of scalar multiplication with respect to vector addition right here this is scalar right it distributes over that vector sum operation it signifies that right and the eighth property let me do that right okay eighth property i hope you were able to see that right some more words and this is the eighth property eight nine eight. is this correct eight right eight and here Distributivity of scalar multiplication with respect to field addition, right? And that multiplication here, China distributes over that scalar sum operation, kind of signifies that, right? And ninth uh, property, compa compatibility of scalar multiplication with field multiplication yeah for example this is a and this is scalar right times u and this is vector right and a times b this is also a multiplication and those are compatible it is fine it means that right and okay and and property identity element of scalar multiplication meaning there must be there must be this is not bold by the way right this is because bold implies vector right it being a vector and there must be one in that field one means identity and scalar multiplication 
identity element of square multiplication is one, right? There must be one in the field. Okay. And since we use real numbers in the beginning of this, I guess, linear system theory, this is one. We can just consider that as one, right? Okay. And the final property identity element of field addition and the vector or not the underlying field must have some zero right and we do that computation we will get zero vector in that vector space right okay so these are the properties we just uh, focus on the properties and and now what was our problem we just forget that right i guess and yeah continuous real functions define on zero one interval right okay and do you think do you think u and v in given vector space if we sum them up we would still get something in that vector space let's do that this is zero and this is one this is something right some let's call it u right and v if we sum them up right right we will still get something right i mean the, it's not important what kind of shape it has right it's it would be real and continuous and in that in the interval right it would be still in that given vector space all right so first property checks out right and here second property second property let me zoom out is the closeness under the scale of multiplication again for a given for a given function right define on that interval if you just scale it right this is it for example zero one right if you scale that you would get something like this or something like this right but you will still have something that is in that vector space right all right let's check the let's move on to the third property okay and what is this yeah there must be some zero vector in that vector space and here in that case in that case zero one right just identically zero right something that is identically zero in that interval is our zero vector okay and since this is a continuous function right you can consider it as being first element zero second element zero dot 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 third element zero dot 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 and infinite element the final element is zero right this is infinite dimensional vector right underlying dimension is infinite okay and yeah we have some zero vector that is the conclusion and let's focus on the fourth property right here what does it say it says addition operation is committed to. and this is like we can directly conclude from our simple function knowledge right f and g they just commute uh, yeah this is like comes nature yeah, i guess and let's focus on the fifth property and which is yeah, associativity right here just focus on that term expression and you can write that in that expression right in that wave in that manner right and since you can do that you can do that that checks out right okay you can satisfy that constraint as well and let's focus on the sixth property which is the you know existence of a inverse element right and for every f you would have minus of that function and that would 
indicate the existence of an inverse, right? Okay, so let's focus on the seventh property, right? Here, what is that? Yeah, distributivity, distributivity property. It's a real tongue tracer, by the way. And here, this is alpha, right? Alpha distributes over that vector addition operation and checks out, right? And eighth property. Here, distributivity in another context this multiplication operation distributes over that field summation addition operation right and you can basically write that down and therefore yeah this is correct right and let's look at this and what is the ninth property here, here, associativity of, yeah, this is another type of associativity property, right? And you can basically write that down, right? You can write in that form, right? So it checks out for the given problem. And let's focus on the tenth property here. I'm looking at this and what is that? The existence of one in that field and yeah, the since the underlying field is R, right? The one or the identity or additive identity is one, right? Just one. Okay. And multiplicate I'm sorry. Yeah, multiplicative identity is 1 and additive identity is 0, right? Okay, and that is the, by the way, 11th, the final property, right? Okay, and in the problem, it also asks about the dimension of this space and this is infinite, right? And if we were to write the basis vectors, we would write, we would write something like, right? Something like this, right? And okay. And you can think of it like there is some, of course, similarity between the Fourier transform object subject, right? Okay. So this. Okay. There is another problem. And that's all. Thanks for watching. Actually, that's not all. I'm going to edit that video. And there is still one little section, right? Part B of that problem we need to focus on. Here, this is a given operator L, right? The L operator. And the operator is defined as here, typical convolution operation. And G here, G is the kernel of that convolution, right? And G is said to be continuous and real function defined on, right? You don't, they don't, not, they have to, they don't have to say that, right? But that we can conclude that. And, okay, so the problem is this. For the given as linear operator, determine if, it is linear operator or not, right? So for a given operator to be a linear one, right? You need to solve whether it satisfies the superposition property, right? And what was the superposition property? You will have some L, right? And alpha x1 plus alpha x2 you will basically supply that signal and you will get i'm sorry beta right alpha y1 plus beta y1 given given you would get y1 when you supply x1 right and also when you supply x2 exactly the system quote unquote system with x2 signals 
again quote unquote signal right with y2 right okay if that is that implies this that would imply the linear Linearity, right linearity let me do it off them right and let's focus on this here and also y2 right we will basically check this okay so here let's write this right explicitly right and again y2 right and we will check whether the given equality holds or not right and we have a question mark here we are not sure at this moment right and we basically distribute that right and since the integral operation is linear right we can factor this in that manner decompose that expression and let's get this alpha out of that integral right and beta as well right and here this is the final form however by using only the definition we can conclude this is y1 and this is y2 and we basically thought this is not question mark this is correct right this equality indeed holds right therefore L operator satisfies the superposition principle which also indicates that the given operator right is what is it it is linear what was the underlying by the way what was the underlying vector space right is l right and each each elements in that vector space right remember we written like u r right again this is u r right vector space vector space vector space right this is the operator each there i say point in that vector space is a continuous function de define on 0 1 interval right something like this again we get and something like this okay define on that interval okay and if we use that g kernel right with the convolution operation we will again get something right in that zero one in that vector space this basically signifies that okay and i'm looking at this and thanks for watching this is the end